So this is uh, Stuart from Store Magic, and he's going to take over. So you've got the marketing guy, Bruce, but I'm going to try to shut up as much as I can, and I'll turn it over to Stuart to do to start our live demo, and show you how these HPE servers work with us. So uh, as Tim and both um, Bruce talked about um, the different pieces of Store Magic with our software layer and with the integration into HPE. So I'm going to go through and show you how the two of our software and HPE go together to create a solution for a particular customer. Um, first, I'm going to just talk about basically the design on the way that it's implemented. So we have our two servers. They're Gen 4, the, the Gen 10 plus V2 servers, um, four logical processors, four NICs. They are one NICs on this um, particular configuration that we have. I'm running four virtual machines on each of those um, appliances. So if we look at the configuration of those, I have it set up where I have a single management port. I have a NICS for my management. Then I have two iSCSI connections. Um, these iSCSI connections can be either set up as a switch. You can go through a distributed switch. You can go through a standard switch. Most of our customers in remote locations just do a back-to-back -back connection between the two servers. That way, they don't have to eat up a switch port in their environment. They just do a back-to-back -back between the two servers. That's the way that these two servers are set up. So I, I do have it set up to where the blue ILO are connected to the instant on switch from Aruba. And then I have the witness connected to the switch, which is on this side of the room. And then host two is on this side of the room. Um, there, the management is connected to the switch. And then I have um, just ethernet connections between the two servers for a direct connect between the two for our iSCSI network. So it makes it very easy for customers to set up in their environment and they don't have to worry about having external switch ports for their environment. So we see a lot of customers will say, well, I've got a server on site and I need to add another server for high availability, but I don't have those switch ports. Well, you don't have to have those switch ports for our um, iSCSI. We just do a direct connect between the two servers. So I have the network set up. Whatever network that you design and have that is your standard network implementation um, for your environment is a network that we will use when we create our virtual storage appliance. And then our virtual storage appliance that we have, if we look at my virtual storage appliance here, you can see that we are very lightweight. We run one vCPU, one gig of RAM, a 512 megabyte boot drive, and then a 20 gig journal file. The 20 gig journal file is used in case one of your hosts goes down, you take it down for maintenance, you have a failure of that host, that 20 gig journal file keeps track of all the changes that were committed while that host was down. And then when that host comes back up, it says, okay, while you're down, you missed these, and it synchronizes that data store between those two servers. And then you can see that I have my VM network and then my two iSCSI networks. Also within this configuration that we have set up, I have our StoreMagic plugin. Our StoreMagic plugin installs as an OVA. When you install it as an OVA, you give it the credentials for your vCenter. And then it is installed as a plugin into your vCenter. From the plugin, if I go to my plugin at the data center, go to configure. Within our plugin, it gives you the ability to deploy our virtual storage appliances, either a single, deploy multiple, you can deploy our witness and create a data store all directly from within VMware. So we have a lot of customers that have multiple environments that they want to deploy, they can do all of their stuff directly from within VMware. Um, like Bruce was saying, a lot of our customers are VMware shops, so they're already familiar with VMware. This just a, is a plug-in and they can deploy to any location that's on their network. So I'm going to go through and show you how to deploy a virtual storage appliance. Um, I already have both installed on this system, so I have a second system I'm going to bring up as a demo system that's in the UK and show you how to install a virtual storage appliance. When you install the virtual storage appliance, it takes a few minutes to go through the wizard, and then once you hit 
to deploy it, it takes about eight to 10 minutes to deploy that virtual storage appliance. So instead of waiting for that to be done and go through the rest of the demo, um, I have another system that I'll do that on so that you can see how it is done. And then I'll come back to this system and we'll create a data store and go through some failure scenarios. While you're showing us all the steps and I appreciate all that so we can see it, is there a way, is there an API available so this can be automated? There is. Um, when we do our, when I, I'll go through and do the, the install, at the end of the install, there's an option to download a PowerShell script. Okay. And you can download that PowerShell script. We've got a large retailer that deployed thousands of these. And what they did, they had one person from their corporate office log into their install, installation places where they're installing. He installed 250 locations a week for four and a half months to deploy over 5,000 locations. Thanks. Thank you. So this is my system in that is in the UK. And just so that I can show you that if I go to my switches, my switches are set up the same as they're configured in this environment where I have a single management connection and then I have two iSCSI switches. So that way you can see it's the same type of environment. So if I go to my data center, go to my StoreMagic plugin, click on Deploy Virtual Storage Appliance. Next, select what server within the environment that you want to deploy to. So I'm going to deploy to um, host number 22. And then this is the root password for ESXi. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, the Licensing agreement, of course, you have to accept the licensing agreement. Um, you need the whole thing first, right? Yeah, you, you're supposed to read the whole thing first. <laughs> um, and we then have it memorized. The name of it, and then your domain, and this 69.3 gigs that's available, this is actually the drive that ESXi is installed on. So you have 69 gigs of free space on that drive. We will create a 512 megabyte VMDK for our virtual appliance for our boot drive. And then we'll also create a, a 20 gig VMDK for the journal file. And that's why it says up there, need 21 gigs to consume. So um, that's all we need for to install our software in this environment. Next, the drive. So I just have a 100 gig drive that's just a raw device mapped directly to this virtual storage appliance. Um, on my systems that I've got here, I have two terabytes that is mapped. Um, what we see most customers do is they will take a RAID, drive, a RAID, array, RAID controller in their server, create a RAID array, one, five, six, it doesn't matter to us, and just present us that raw drive as a capacity layer. And then we use that as our capacity layer to mirror between our two servers. Um, it can be spinning disk, it can be SSDs, it doesn't matter to us. If you even have attached storage, if you have a direct attached storage to that server, we can use that as well. So we're just going to use that 100 gig drive that I've got available there. Um, if you want SSD or memory caching, you can enable caching. Um, most customers that are running in a SSD environment don't need caching, but we see a lot at our remote locations that customers have an older server, they may have spinning disks in it, and they need some additional performance. So you can add a cache layer in there by either adding an SSD, or you can use up to 32 gigs of memory as a cache layer, or you can enable both. If you enable both, then you get what we call predictive caching, which takes your hot, hottest running applications, preloads those into memory, and then as they cool down, it'll move them from memory to your SSDs out to your lowest end storage. So gives you the ability to do that performance that you need if you've got applications that are running on slower spinning disks. So question on this. Um, I'm assuming the, so you said you could use either an SSD or memory, and I'm assuming that's those two check boxes under the Correct. device. So that enable SSD caching using raw device mapping. I want to ask about that one. Um, RDMs are an old technology within VMware, but aren't necessarily used much these days because they have some downsides to that. So do you have to use an RDM in order to do the SSD caching? Or can you just point to, hey, there's, there's a 
data store over here, create a VMDK over here, use that as your um, use that as your cache. The drive that I have here is just a drive that I've created. It's just a drive that's on my that I created a data store on. Okay. Okay. So it can just use a regular data store. It doesn't have it to be an It Doesn't have to be. Okay. Cool. So to set up networking on the VMware, on the management, just you just want to enable management, uncheck your iSCSI and your mirroring. Um, within this solution, also, if you only have a, a one gig or 10 gig pipe and that's the only thing you have, you can run our management iSCSI and mirroring over the same network. You will get performance hits on that, but it is an option that is available. Set up the address. Enable DNS. Then we'll do the same and set up our iSCSI connections. And on our iSCSI connections, we only want iSCSI and not management. So around the automation piece, is it just PowerShell or is there a restful endpoint that we can hit on the, I guess, the appliance itself? To, to... For automation, do we do um, a REST API or is it just PowerShell? Was that your yeah, point? that's right, because obviously there's PowerShell command lists, so I'm guessing they're hitting yeah. something. Yeah, right now it's PowerShell. Okay. PowerShell is our answer to that. I have an overall question too. Yes. So you're a VCN, your store magic. This is only storage. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around how customers on in an edge situation would right. use this. So if this is just storage, do they also need um, space to run an application? And what kind of things do you see your customers doing on the edge that is different? Because right now this just to me seems like um, it, it's kind of Colo 2.0. So it, what's, what are your customers doing? It's just the storage that we're setting up? This is just a data store that we're setting up right. for the storage. Once the data store is set up, you can run VMs on it. Okay. You can use it to present it as storage to a database. Um, we have customers that have VMs that are running on, I've got a customer that's running 400 terabytes for video surveillance. They have six VMs running on their storage. They have um, 100 cameras per VM. So you can use it for storage. You can even use it for a Veeam backup repository or Commvault backup repository. Um, hospitals, we've got some hospitals that use it because they need the failover and the redundancy. Um, schools use it a lot. They'll put one server in one building, another building, they'll have another server. So they've got built the servers across campus. So we support stretch clustering. As long as there's less than 20 milliseconds of latency between the two, we can support a stretch cluster. So that way, if they've got a, a building that has a power outage, it doesn't affect their, affect their campus. Um, everything still continues to run. So they're, we're presenting them storage, just as you would get storage from an external device, like a, a fiber channel or something like that. We're presenting block, block level storage to your hypervisor to use as they would use any other storage. And then we're keeping it highly available between the two. So whatever is written to one is written to the other one. Yeah, the only other thing I'd add is it is a hyper-converged cluster. So it's an HCI solution. So we're building the storage layer, highly reliable, and then the customer runs any number of virtual machines on the same hardware. So that's the whole thing for the edge. I'm not sure if this answers your question again, but it's too, two servers with highly available storage between them, then they run all their local applications. Like you know, Stuart was giving some examples. In retail, they'd run point of sale and inventory management. They'd be different VMs provisioned on the same hardware. So it's an all-in-one all solution, hyper-converge, where the storage layer is a hypervisor that they run their applications on. Does that help? It does. Okay. <laughs> I have a why I question about the compute nodes too, right? So once they run out of memory and compute on the, the two storage nodes, you've they can add right. They can add compute node because we're we we do iSCSI. 
we will support and we can add an iSCSI target. So we can either do VMware KVM or Hyper-V. So we can present an iSCSI target to any device that has an iSCSI initiator. What does it look like when a node fails and what's the level of effort to replace a node? Because I know like one of the main concerns with an edge site, whether it's retail or something else, is the people there have no idea how to install, work with this tech, whatever it is. So what does it look like when uh, one of the node fails at a retail location and they need to replace it? Um, you'll actually be able to see that here in a few minutes. I'm actually going to have them pull a power cord on one of my um, <laughs> microservers, and we'll go through the process of recovering that. And we'll even have them pull the power cord to our um, Raspberry Pi for our witness. So you'll see a server that is gone offline, our witness that is offline, and the recovery of that. Okay. So select your NTP, your license key for this environment. Next, give it a password. When we install our VSA, our VSA, the um, Default user is admin, and then this is the password for that. And then this is where I was talking about downloading the PowerShell script. After we go through and do a complete configuration of our environment, we can download a PowerShell script. We see a lot of customers that are doing remote locations or they're doing large rollouts where if the two servers are connected in a back-to-back -back configuration for our iSCSI, they can use the same IP addresses no matter where they deploy that across their environment. So the only thing that changes is the name of the server and the management IP. And then they can use that to deploy unattended installs across their locations. And then finish, and then it takes about eight to 10 minutes to deploy the virtual storage appliance. It'll, it'll install the OVA, set up your network, set up your iSCSI, set up your storage pools. So.